Now, who's the reactive atom? The carbo, the, I mean, the... The radical over here. And the carb radical. Who would that go out and attack now? All right. Turns out, um, that's, that's not a bad guess, although actually, uh, do we have any ROHs? Uh, yeah, I guess we do have uh, one from over here. Um, but actually, I think what we usually think of this as happening now is it getting the hydrogen from here. We would think of it as getting the hydrogen from here in our chain reaction. All right, and that would give us this. So let's draw the products from that step. And you can either show the hydrogen here or not show it, whatever you like. It's going to be a hidden hydrogen. Um, the key thing is there's not going to be an unpaired electron here anymore. Now, is this going to be a stereocenter? No. So we don't need to worry about forming two extra products here. where the hydrogen attaches to the, malt, the intermediate that had the bromine on a wedge. So it gives us these two as our final products. We also get a bromine radical over here. And what would this bromine radical go on to do? Well, it would go back up to this previous propagation step. This is another chain mechanism. Remember that radical mechanisms tend to be chain mechanisms. So this propagates on itself. Peroxide. The peroxide we should just think of as an initiator. Oh. The peroxide is the initiator. The hard thing here is getting the radicals in the first place. It's not that easy to form radicals. Well, it turns out it's not too hard to make a peroxide radical. And then the peroxide radical is very reactive and forms um, our bromine radical over here. Um, but as usual, the, the early initiation steps only have to, have to happen once for many millions of propagation. Uh, this is not exactly the same as radical halogenation because um, uh, in, in radical halogenation we just had one initiation, whereas here these two steps together are both kind of the initiation. They're both what we're doing to try to get the bromine radical. Do you write the termination steps? That's right. Uh, unless they specifically ask you for termination steps, we usually don't write termination steps. That's right. Um, so we've gotten to the interesting part here. We've shown how to generate these products. The interesting thing is showing how to generate these organic products. And then you should know, though, that now this bromine will go back and go through another cycle. Now the bromine can attack another alkene, uh, and that will get, produce another pair of these, and then it'll produce a new bromine radical. So this just feeds on itself. We won't worry about the termination steps here. Okay, so uh, these are our final products. So what is important to notice here? Well, was this Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Um, anti-Markovnikov. Anti-Markovnikov because the electronegative atom ended up on the less substituted carbon. Remember that Markovnikov is when the electronegative atom ends up on the more substituted carbon. And anti-Markovnikov is when the electronegative atom ends up on the less substituted carbon, which is what we have here. This is the first example we've seen of anti-Markovnikov. Every other example we've seen so far has been Markovnikov. Can you explain why it's anti-Markovnikov again? Well, by definition, Markovnikov is when the electronegative atom ends up on the more substituted carbon in the alkene. And anti-Markovnikov is when the electronegative atom ends up on the less substituted. Okay. So in this case, what are we doing here? We're adding an H and a Br. Overall, we're adding an H and a Br. Well, theoretically, the H could end up on the left and the Br on the right, or the Br could end up on the left and the H on the right. Those are the two possibilities. Well, if the bromine ends up here, we would call that anti-Markovnikov. And if the bromine ends up here, we would call that Markovnikov. Well, in this reaction, the bromine ended up on the right, on the less substituted carbon. So it was anti-Markovnikov. 
And we can also explain why it's anti-Markovnikov, whereas all the other reactions we've seen have been Markovnikov. We're still forming the more substituted uh, carbocation or uh, radical, so what's the difference? Well, in this reaction, did the bromine join before the hydrogen or after? In this reaction, the bromine joined first, and then the hydrogen joined. But how about in the previous electrophilic additions that we did? Hydrogen, hydrogen first, because that was the electrophile, and then the bromine. Well, whoever joins first ends up on the less substituted carbon so that we can form the more substituted carbocation or radical. So therefore, whoever joins second is going to end up on the more substituted carbon because that was the more stabilized carbocation or radical. So the big difference here between this and the previous reactions is that in our previous electrophilic reactions, the hydrogen was attacking, attacking first. And that's why the uh, halogen ended up on the more substituted. But here the halogen was attacking first and then the hydrogen ended up on the more substituted. All right, so it's important not just to memorize this is anti-Markovnikov, but be, to be able to explain it as well. And we've been able to explain it with the mechanism uh, over here. The mechanism explains uh, the regiochemistry. Uh, this reaction is not in the handout, because when I prepared the handout, it was for a class that didn't cover this reaction. So you just want to make sure so you have what is this called, radical? This is called a uh, radical addition. It's not electrophilic addition. It's radical addition with peroxide being... Yeah, the radical initiator, which I think is the only type of radical addition you'll probably see here. And you also need uh, this light as an energy source. The hard part here is getting the radicals in the first place. All right, so we've seen that radical addition is anti-Markovnikov, and electrophilic addition, uh, the electrophilic additions we've seen so far have been Markovnikov. Because in the electrophilic additions, the hydrogen adds first, and in the radical addition, uh, the halogen adds first. Uh, another point, this only works well for hydrobromic. It doesn't work for any other halogen. So you can't use chlorine or iodine here. This has to be bromine. Um, the other reactions we've seen so far would work for chlorine, bromine, or iodine. That's in the handout. But this reaction is only for HBr. Uh, that's just a fact to memorize. Right, so this is a pretty complicated mechanism. Um, there's no way you'll be able to do this mechanism ha having only seen it once. You've got to take a blank piece of paper when you get home and try to get, come through this again. And then when you look at your notes, you'll see you got it wrong. And then you'll do it again and do it again. If you do this repeatedly and keep checking your notes, eventually you'll get to the point where you can get through the mechanism correctly. Uh, but just seeing this mechanism once uh, definitely is not enough. You've got to do a lot of practice on this to get the basic mechanism right. Uh, but the key thing to keep in mind is that the hydrogen is the one that, uh, the, the bromine is the one that's attacking first here. Did I get that right? You know, I don't think I drew this right then, did I? Or did I? No, yeah, I did. The bromine attacks first. Here, the bromine attacks first. 